the map, and especially the top left and bottom right expansions. Let's jump into the game. Ah, yes. A little bit of polar night here for you, and it's my pleasure to bring you Petraeus from Team Frenetic Array. He is in the red trunks, and he is playing Zerg to the south of this map. Versus his opponent, who comes off a victory against a rather sloppy foe, you lucky, I've got to say. It is Evil Geniuses Alive in the blue trunks playing Terran to the north. Yeah, I have to say so too. Um... It's not so much that Alive won, I would say it's more like Lucky lost. Lucky which lost. Is unfortunate, I think Lucky was in great position to both game to win it. I mean, game number one, he definitely kind of threw. Game number two... Even then, I was I was still salty about it giving up at that point. I know, I, I think I just think he didn't quite realize how much damage he had done. I think he could have played on, there was still a chance of winning from that position. So it does make you wonder if Lucky was really trying 100% in that game. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but... Uh, alive, I mean, he showed his control as normal, but he did nothing, like, super stunning, right? Like, yes, no. his defense was in game number one was great, but overall, it's, uh, it's kind of what hey, we expect hey. from Alive. Well, this is interesting, and is gonna be immediately No! no! Petraeus! Petraeus, what are you doing? Turn to, 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 to Petraeus, you... Oh, I know you come from a small island, but you've got to check all of the map. All oh. of it. There might be horrible demons in the fog. Oh, dear lord. Sad well, face. guess who's getting two raxed? Um, I talked to QXC about this build, and he says it, it's just like a ridiculous win rate. It's like 90% win rate with the build if you ever use this. And I expect it to be used. So what he's going to do, he's going to build a bunker like right over here, really far away from the, the hatchery, and then kind of, um, you know, slowly leapfrog. advance onto it. Yeah, leapfrog up onto it and just do damage with a lot of marines, a low count of SCVs, and it's a macro build. It sounds weird, but it is a macro build. You transition after this if you don't yeah. do game-ending damage already. Yeah, yeah, you can you can definitely make that work. You don't have to all in for that position. I do not believe Petraeus did not scout that. He was absolutely in the position. He has got, it's gonna take a while even that, he's turning the Overlord around as well. He's not even gonna send that out of the way. There's, he's oh. not gonna know about this until it actually hits him. He will see the SCV building the bunker, and in fact, in this case, Alive's actually got more aggro with it than usual. You were talking about the idea of building it away, but in this case, he is actually going to build it right there. I wonder if Petraeus realizes he's being Turax, though, because this is not necessarily a Turax build. I mean, he, he's got to figure it out now. There's, th there's three Marines, he's definitely going to figure it out now. Definitely so. He's trying to pick off the SCV that's making the bunker, but it's not going to be not taken out in time. No way. Oh, second bunker goes down. Now he, he, can, there. he can still defend this. He just needs a lot of Zerglings. He just waits until he has like 16 of them, just goes and tries to attack in with two queens. But, oh God, so many more SCVs are over here. He's brought a lot of SCVs to the party this time around, hasn't he? We were saying this wasn't quite all in, but it definitely can be when you bring that many SCVs off the line. But Petraeus is in a terrible spot. He's waiting for as long as he can before he feels like he's got to engage, but this hatchery is going to die. I don't think there's any way around that. And that could result in Petraeus giving up, but we'll see. We'll see what kind of, I suppose, determination that Petraeus actually has. Mm -hmm. Are there enough links to even kill those two bunkers? Arguably not with the reinforcements coming behind it. This could, this is a disaster. There's no real way yeah. around that. I agree. And right now it's up to Alive. Uh, there's a couple of transitions that you can do from here. Uh, normally it's you make a lot of bunkers if you see that they're not taking up to lair. And that's what yeah. he's doing. He's making two additional bunkers. I like this a lot because he's kind of anticipating. Now you can do, I guess, three major builds. It's going to be lair tech, Zergling, Baneling, or Roaches. And that's why a lot of people will just scan here and see what's going on and make their appropriate yeah. response. And if he's able to see that it's incoming Banelings, he just makes, uh, I would I would even say like eight bunkers and he's fine. Well, there's 27 lings on the field. Baneling Nest is not really done yet. I wonder if Petraeus will wait for that. I, I think he has to. There's engaging with just lings here would be suicide. He's just gonna beat on the rocks for the time being. And you know, we've still got 14 drones mining away here, but there's no question that Alive is ahead and now he's transitioning out of this with a command center. But with five bunkers and that many Marines in it, even with Banelings, it's gonna take a lot to get through that efficiently. Yeah, that's so cool that he's just 
lifting up the barracks, anticipating this attack, and just preparing for the, the combination that's gonna come afterwards. I mean, Alive is just content with denying the, the natural for so long. Yeah. And yeah, uh, he didn't even leave all of his marines there. Uh, he's actually going back with a few of them as well. He's like, I'm I am totally happy with this. I'm under no illusions of trying to force the victory with this because I know this has put me super far ahead and oh yeah, I'm going to go double CC after that. <laughs> and there it is. Lovely. Zerglings and Banelings will attack. There's great surface area and everything's yeah. going to die. Well, there were only like four marines. That's to be expected. So Petraeus can feel a small victory there. But with these mar I wonder if these Marines will actually get back home. They might not. The Lings are on the way. They really want to catch them out, and it's possible that they might just maybe get them. He's going to yeah, set that... us... Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to say, he's going all the way through there. If Alive had actually left his depots down, that would have been the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But Petraeus <laughs> is actually going to try and bust it right now. Yes, he is. Uh, I think there are enough bunkers up here. Wow, I'm really surprised he went the third command center. That's, uh, that's being a little, a greedy. little bit greedy, yeah. You know what? Alive might have killed himself here. He might have. He could bust this. There's a lot of links to follow this one up. You may be right. Uh -oh. Alive uh -oh. could have killed himself. Let's find out. In come the links. Got the bait links coming in as well. Try to get a connection. They get a connection up against the SCVs right there. And he just killed... No, he hasn't killed the bunker at all. He just almost had it. And down it goes. Well, this is actually still fine for Alive yeah. because... He's got triple orbital now, so he doesn't care. Losing SCVs is not a factor for him at this point. And if those Banelings didn't do game-ending damage, then Petraeus realizes the follow-up certainly isn't. So he's going to build that hatchery and is going to go back into droning. It's unfortunate, but he's just so far behind. I mean, 16, 17 harvesters right now. If you just mine with mules, that's 13 and a half. So you're looking at just mule production that equals all the drone production that's currently out. That is scary right now. Uh, and Alive just being very complete with his defense, getting additional two bunkers up. He has his factory uh, on the way. Uh, he's getting his upgrades. Everything looks great. Alive, all he needs to do is just max out and get like some key upgrades, which is stim, combat shields, maybe even plus one, plus one. Get some medevacs out and then push. And just leaning on Petraeus at this point should be enough to kill him because Petraeus is behind several minutes at this point. Yeah, yeah, disastrously behind. And uh, I guess it speaks to Alive's confidence that he believed he could have double CC'd and held any potential follow-up there. And, you know, maybe if he'd kept all his Marines at the front and had them die, he wouldn't have been able to hold it, which just shows his foresight. He knows what the Zerg player is forced to do, so he just moves away, leaves a bare minimum kind of rear guard, and then says, come at me and see what happens. And we saw what happened, and Alive just held it beautifully. Look how bold Alive is. Heading out here with these Marines. I mean, they easily so be many surrounded. Marines. I, I, so many Marines, though, especially with Hellions at the back. I think he realized just how far ahead he is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but as you said, the Hellions are popping out here. And they're just going to poke around and see what's going on. I think, man, maybe Alive is just going to be so confident that he goes as soon as Stim finishes. Because he is so mm. far ahead. Might be a mistake. It depends because even if you're if you're attacking a Zerg that you know has Baneling tech and you get in an awkward spot and you end up losing all your Marines to Banelings in some stupid way, then you can end up dying horribly. So maybe that would be hubris, I think, from Alive. But as you said, he is that far ahead. And it doesn't really show in the work account, but it should show in the mule count. 33 to 37, but there's five mules on the map right now. It's it's just silly. The income is about to skyrocket in favor of the Terran. That's right. I mean, Alive's just going to overdo it with production at this point. This is something that we always see from him. He's right now just getting his essential upgrades 1-1. One, one. He will be getting medevacs pretty soon here. Uh, he's poking out on the map, but Alive is doing everything absolutely right to just not die to anything silly and win the game seamlessly, right? 1-1 one, one is on the way for Petraeus. Yeah. He's getting a second Baneling Nest. That stinks. That's... I, I was telling him earlier about spare tech building. <laughs> I think he, he may have taken that to heart, and this is not the time when you're this far behind that you should be doing that. So maybe not the best of ideas, but regardless, he's probably shaken. I mean, let's be honest. He got ripped to shreds in the early game, and he, he knows he's so far behind. And he's basically playing with the hope that Alive makes a mistake. Uh, you know, that's that's a nice little start with a couple of Hellions being caught out there, but it's going to take a lot more than that. I agree. Alive's so careful here. I mean, he, yeah. he's 
He's just being so mindful that, yeah, my Hopefully opponent... Hopefully so, maybe. My opponent he didn't might... have to lift that back. He really didn't. Like, no. he, he had Marines in a decent spot. I guess maybe he was afraid of a run by into the natural from the side, but yeah, he didn't have to stop mining there. Well, Medivax will join up with this this force, and things are looking really terrible for Petraeus. I mean, this is a lot of Marines. These They're are slow great. banelings. Yeah. Uh, one one's about to finish, but it's not going to be done by the time that this push actually hits this third base. If it was, maybe this would be a different fight, but these painlings are not going to do much. Well, uh, there you go. That's, GG. The, the game ends in a in a whimper as opposed to a bang there, I'm afraid. And Alive takes what was pretty much a foregone conclusion.